our first, our very first special guest kicking off our program. Uh, no, it's not me. It's not Jen. Um, we have a special guest who you may have seen on Saturday mornings on CBS. Uh, her name is Hope Swinimer, and she has a program called Hope in the Wild. She is also a wildlife rehabilitator. I had a chance to sit down with Hope uh, yesterday, and uh, we're going to bring that interview to you in just a moment. So uh, we'll be back right after this interview with Hope Swinimer. Uh, please enjoy. We are so excited to be here with our next guest, uh, kicking off the Streamathon for Pets. You may have seen her on CBS on Saturday mornings, or you may have heard of her wild adventures in rehabilitation of wildlife animals. Uh, today we have Hope Swinimer here with us from Hope for Wildlife. Hope, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to this. Well, we're thrilled. Um, you know, we know this is a very difficult time right now for a lot of people. And, you know, those out there watching, they are helping us by providing exposure for small pet businesses and rescues, uh, organizations that have wonderful missions. Tell us a little bit about the mission for Hope for Wildlife. Hope for Wildlife is all about connecting people to their natural world. So sort of reintroducing them because I find over the years people have kind of lost touch with nature. So really our mission is to reconnect people and help them appreciate it. So we, we really have three important goals. And once it, one is the rehabilitation work itself and getting these injured wild animals back out to the wild. But we also do a lot of research. So that's one of our goals. And the third and perhaps the goal that makes the biggest change is education. So we do a ton of work in the school systems and we have guided tours during, during different times than we're facing right now, where schools will come out and visit and learn about Nova Scotia's wildlife. So highlight some of the differences uh, for our viewers of wildlife in Nova Scotia versus the United States where most people are tuning in. I know, I bet there's a lot of differences. I know you have opossums, I believe. We don't have those in Nova Scotia, but we do have some very interesting wildlife here. We have lots of birds of prey, which I'm sure you, you are familiar with. We have black bears, um, deer. We have uh, lots of raccoons and porcupines and skunks and foxes, and then all the smaller type rodents like groundhogs and squirrels and all that kind of thing. So a very, a very big variety. We can see up to 250 different species uh, each and every year. And we get about 4,500 different animals that come into our facility each year. Wow, that's a, that's a lot to manage. So how many people on staff for you? I remember when I started, you know, we hardly had any paid people. It was all volunteer. But as time goes on and you progress, um, we've got about six full-time year-round staff, so it's still very, very small, but thank heavens for the wonderful volunteers. If it wasn't for them to keep, keep us glued together, I don't know what we'd do without them. But, and we also have a program where we have interns come in, and they're all arriving this weekend, so we're pretty excited about that. So we have interns that sign up for a 16-week stay with us through the summer. And they get to do a lot of really interesting work. Um, we have a full-time veterinarian right here on site in a veterinary hospital. So some of them get to work in the medical world. And then we have a lot that do the actual hands-on with the babies. It could be in the nurseries. And we have a lot of turtles that come through Hope for Wildlife. So we have another group of people that work with them. And, and then we have the white-tailed deer and the, and the larger mammals that people get to get to work with and learn about. So it's quite diverse in the experience and some people even like to go out on the road and rescue these animals that are in distress. So do you take calls as well or how do you find out about the animals that are in distress? Exactly. Uh, for our province from end to end it probably would take at least 10 hours to drive from end to end. It's not a very big province but we take wildlife from all of Nova Scotia so it from, could be from the tip of Cape Breton right down to Yarmouth which is on the, on the south southern end of the province. So it covers a lot of area. We do take, we 
we sometimes have two or three people manning the phones in the busy summer days. We can get up to 100 calls a day. Uh, you know, when we count at the end of the year, we have over 30,000 phone calls. So, and it's a really good avenue to educate people too, because sometimes they call just with questions and wondering what's normal in the natural world and we're able to help them out and they realize that the wild animal isn't in distress or they may find a fawn that's sitting quietly in the bush without any mother and we can explain to them that that's perfectly normal and that's the way it should be. Yeah, and you know, one thing that is interesting um, and maybe one of the few positives, and we'll talk about the negatives uh, or, or the impact that the pandemic has had on um, rescue organizations like yourself, but you know, one of the positives that we've seen, and I'm wondering if you're seeing the same thing in Nova Scotia, that with people under stay-at-home orders and not being out and about as much, we're seeing wildlife reemerge uh, in and sort of taking claim of, of land that was once theirs. Have you experienced the same thing or have you heard um, about this sort of phenomenon? Absolutely. And it is interesting. And we as rehabbers wonder what kind of effect it will have on our season. If people are at home more and they're, they're not out and about on the roads, there's probably going to be less hit by cars. And that's one of the main reasons we get wildlife in. But we're also seeing the other side of the coin where people are into gardening and landscaping. So they're out, you know, uh, cutting down things and finding little nests of babies. So you know, it's important that if you're going to be enjoying your backyard, you do a good walkabout first to make sure that you're not going to be disturbing a nest or something that you didn't even realize was there. So it is a good opportunity to check things out. Um, we're also receiving calls because people are staying home more. They might only use their car once a week now, and they don't think to check under the hood, but little squirrels might have decided to nest inside your inside your car it happens more than you think so <laughs> different kinds of wildlife issues with the pandemic so it's it's really interesting to see it's going to be interesting to see what the season is like yeah as we're able to re-emerge from this uh you know obviously everyone's watching the the fallout and the impact it's having on businesses you know that's really why we're doing the streamathon for pets it's to raise money for these small and independent businesses and these rescue organizations, uh, even like yourself, I mean, I know you get a lot of funding um, every year, but how is this impacting you from a rescue level and an organizational perspective? It's, it's really difficult. We're not government funded at all, as most wildlife facilities aren't. So it's that $20 donation someone might give you when they drop off an injured wild animal. And we used to do a lot of our fundraising through our education work. And sadly, we, are, we aren't able to do it in the same way. And we have been doing some streaming uh, to educate people about some of the issues they may come across. But it's not quite the same, but it is making a difference. I think it's amazing what you're doing and to help all the businesses out there that we all have the same interests. We all care about living things. And it's really what it's all about and a chance for everybody to come together and take part in that. I think it's really wonderful. Well, thank, thank you very much for those kind words. Now, um, you know, where a lot of our viewers may know you from, and I'm sure they're all going to, you know, look for your videos and find out more about uh, your organization, but they've seen you on TV. Talk a little bit about what that's like, you know, being a TV star, um, you know, being on people's TVs uh, throughout the country and across the globe uh, on Saturday mornings. Uh, it, has it changed uh, you at all or, or anything about your organization? Well, it's funny because, you know, I, I don't even stop and think that people might recognize me when I go out into public. And so from that way, it really hasn't changed me personally at all. It has helped um, with funding, obviously, for the Hope for Wildlife because it's brought awareness uh, to, you know, a lot of people didn't even know wildlife rehabilitation facilities existed until they started watching the show. And it, I had a lot of calls and people would say, you know, I called around locally where I live and found out that there was a rehab right in my own backyard. And I think that's so great. And, you know, that's one of the really good things that have come out of the show. It's let people know that there's lots of rehabbers out there. There's lots you can do to help them. Just pick up the phone, find a local one. The other really interesting thing that I love about the show is that it's, it's brought children um, into the wild world and it's helped them appreciate it, recognize it, maybe be more aware of what's what the proper way to, to handle wildlife situations are. So I think that's one of the 
truly wonderful things that's come out of the TV show. And it will go, it's in its 10th year now. And oh my gosh, congratulations. So, that's amazing. Yeah, it's a long time, <laughs> but it's very little work. Um, the, there's only one cameraman and usually one other person that come out and they're very careful and they care deeply about the animals. And, you know, if, if an animal is showing any signs of stress, they, they will back off immediately. So it's been this wonderful relationship for 10 long years and we've gotten to know the, the cameramen and, and, you know, they're part of our group now. They could, they could answer our wildlife calls because they know the commonly asked questions and the proper answers to them. More volunteers for the organization, right? Yes. <laughs> now, how can someone, you've mentioned interns, you've mentioned volunteers, you've mentioned that a lot of your funding is from personal donations. How can people find out more information about Hope for Wildlife other than tuning into your show? Absolutely. We have a very active Facebook page and our website, hopeforwildlife.net. It takes you right to the Facebook page and do, do go in and look around and you'll kind of see what we're up to at any given time. And, you know, like everybody else, we're, we're trying to educate, show people what's happening in our charity. And of course, you're always trying to get enough dollars ahead to make ends meet for sure. Well, awesome. Well, Hope, we are so pleased to have you here. For our viewers just joining us, that we're with Hope Swinomer from Hope for Wildlife. You can catch her on Saturday mornings on CBS um, or check her out. Uh, check out the rescue. And uh, before we go, I did want to ask you, is there maybe a favorite rescue or like a diciest rescue uh, rehabilitation that you can share with our viewers? Uh, they're all so wonderful and they all speak to you in a different way and they bring out emotions and thought processes. I think the rescue that, that comes to mind that I remember the, the most was at the very beginning of Hope for Wildlife and I was home one night and there was a knock on the door and a couple arrived and they just dropped this bucket on my front steps with a cover on it. And, you know, and then they just left. They didn't tell me. They just said it couldn't keep up with the rest of the family and they dropped it. And so I, I was a little nervous and I opened the lid and I look inside and I'll always remember this baby otter looking up at me with those, that big face, oh that tiny little body. Um, and it was the first otter I'd ever had the joy of rehabilitating. And it just taught me so much about nature and so much about natural instinct. Um, it was truly a journey and it takes a long time to rehabilitate an otter up to 18 months. So we were able, we were very lucky. We live on a beautiful lake and we were able to do a soft release, but that came with issues too. So it was, it was all in all, it had a very happy ending. So it was, it was a great journey for me and the otter. Well, and we're so thankful that that really jump-started your journey in wildlife rehabilitation. Uh, I'm sure the numbers are through the roof. The wildlife community is better for uh, having you involved in it. In it. Um, and we truly thank you from the bottom of our hearts for joining us today and taking some time from what it sounds like is going to be a very busy weekend for you. It is, and good luck with your mission. I think it's amazing. Anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers before we go? Uh, no, just, just remember that all living things, it's all about getting people to open their hearts and their mind to living things and treating them with respect and caring. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself. Hope, thank you for helping kick off the Streamathon for Pets. That was Hope Swinimer with Hope for Wildlife. And again, don't miss her on Saturday mornings on CBS. Thank you so much, Hope, once again. We really appreciate it. Thank you.